Okay, thank you very much. I would like first to thank the organizers of this meeting and more especially Professor Kovas. It's very kind of you. And um, actually, it's my very first trip to Brazil and also to South America, so it's a very nice experience to me and I just love your country, really. <laughs> so, so my talk today will deal with the new trends for the genotyping of rare blood groups and I, I have also added the new blood group systems just to give you a quick overview of the novel blood group system being discovered during the past few years. Let me just first start with an update on the human red blood cell antigens. And as you all know, uh, red blood cell types is a quite complex concept because it's not only ABO and RH, of course not. There are many, many other blood group systems as depicted on this cartoon. Uh, so it's, uh, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really complex thing. Just to give you an idea, uh, this, is, uh, this is the official numbers of blood groups uh, from the International Society of Blood Transfusion. Uh, the last meeting um, was held in London this year, so there are now 36 blood group systems. Uh, this accounts for 308 <coughs> antigens. And there, there are also three other families of, of antigens. I won't go into details, but the names are collections, the 700 series and the 901 series. Uh, uh, you should know that these, these antigens, we don't know their molecular basis. So that comes to a total of 346 human red blood cell antigens. So just to give you an idea of the complexity of this. Of this. Uh, these are the first 17 blood group systems on this table, and it should be here, yes. Uh, I, um, I, ha I have here uh, just put uh, in orange <laughs> the most common blood group systems that you all know, ABO, RH, KL, and so on. <coughs> just to give you another idea of the complexity, uh, RH, you see here, 54 antigens. So when you perform D, big C, big little C, and little E, this is only five antigens, but there are there, uh, there is, but there is here a total of 54 antigens for RH. MNS2 is a very complex system, 48 antigens, KL 35, and so on. Uh, these are the following up to, oops, sorry, back, no. Here, um, up to number 36. Um, so these may be not familiar to you. I won't go into details today. I don't have the time, of course not. But I will just insist more at the end of my talk on this one, JR, and also the, the very last one, Augustine. It's a nice name. <laughs> 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 so there are many, many red blood cell antigens, but you have to be aware that this is a little, bit, a, little bit, a little bit less complex than, than uh, it could be. Uh, indeed, uh, in here, as you may see, most of us here in the room, we display these antigens in this right part of this diagram. That's to say, these are public antigens. <coughs> there is very likely no difference between us. Here, these are very very, very unfrequent antigens, and they are named also private antigens. That means that we are very likely in the room not to display them, okay? And this is here in the green part that where reside our differences between us in the room. So this is where the, where the routine problems occur. But if you don't carry an antigen here, then you are said to be a public negative antigen. And if you are transfused, you may develop the corresponding antibody. And then it can cause a real challenge to find blood because there, there is no chance to find compatible blood in your blood bank. So what are the rare blood groups? Um, rare blood, uh, this corresponds to, 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 to a challenge to quickly get compatible red blood cell units for a patient. 
and this is and this is sometimes very 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 challenging with no possibility at, at the national level and sometimes also at the international level. We had to face a recent case and we had no compatible blood in the world for our patient. So it's a real, very, it's a real challenge and this needs an international collaboration. The definition of rarity is, uh, is controversial. It is supposed to be below 1 in 250 in our country but in most countries, it's less than 1 in 1,000. So when you have a phenotype with a prevalence less than 1 in 1,000 in most countries, you're supposed to carry a rare blood type. In France, it's less. It's 1 in 250. These are a few examples of rare blood types. First, uh, in Western Europe, I won't go into details. I don't have the time, but just to give you a few names. Little K negative, YTA negative, Lutheran B negative, and so on. This is, this is the approximate prevalence in Europe. And then you may also encounter most r uh, more rare, rarer blood types, such as Gerbisch minus 2 minus 3 or Coltonol, and these are very rare blood types. Uh, in, black, in black Africa and the Caribbean islands, uh, uh, the rare blood types are very different. Um, so I, uh, the first one here, big S negative, little s negative, uh, this might be U negative or U plus dar, it's just a little bit of difference anyway. It's a real problem in France because we have quite a lot of sickle cell disease patients with this rare type and when they make the corresponding antibody, that's to say anti-U, it's, it's, it's a real challenge to find compatible blood. So we have to get blood from the National Rare Blood Bank and this is, our, this is our lab that takes care of this blood bank at the biomedical level. Uh, this, these are a few other rare blood types specific to, uh, uh, to people of African descent, especially within the, within the RH system. So it's quite complex. This is, this, this is in the Kale system and this is in the Dombrock system. Just to give you an idea, 40% of, um, of the red blood cell units that are delivered in our country from the French National Red Blood Bank, they are transfused to sickle cell disease patients. So it's quite a lot. Uh, in, North, in North Africa, the situation is not the same that, than in Sub-Saharan Africa. We face uh, some specific rare blood types, these ones. So so you see here, it's not Gerbisch minus two minus three, but it's Gerbisch minus two, three. So it's not the same one than the one before. And they don't make the same antibody. Uh, yeah. <laughs> this one is quite frequent in North Africa and also in Middle East countries. And this is quite interesting because when you carry this, these, these red blood types, you may, you may develop an antibody. And this is responsible for very, for for very early miscarriages uh, in women, and uh, sometimes uh, it can be up to eight to ten miscarriages in a row, and there is nothing to do. So, except sometimes plasma plasmapheresis, it may work. We had to deal with this once uh, in collaboration with with, uh, with Switzerland. Um, in uh, in uh, other populations, uh, it is again different. It's quite surprising to see that the Duffy A negative type is so <coughs> rare in China. It's supposed to be a rare blood type and they freeze it. Uh, it's not a problem in our countries. D negative also is very rare it, and it's not rare in our countries at all. JRA negative in Japan, I will come back to this later on. JKA negative, B negative in the Pacific Islands. And I, I also added this because as you know, we have here a very small territory um, um, it's um, French overseas territory, French Guiana, and we have some very specific rare blood types in this um, area that you may, I'm sure, encounter here, uh, here in your country. So the first one is D dash dash, that means there is no RHC protein, as you can see here, and this is, and this is found in, in the Bushinenge ethnic population. 
And another one uh, that we discovered more, more lately is this one, and it, it is really, really very, very exceptional. We have only one single donor, active donor in France for this rare blood type. Actually, they don't express the D antigen, but they have the D gene, but, but it's not functional. So this is very exceptional. And if you have some uh, in Brazil, I would be very, very interested to collaborate. <laughs> I'm sure, I'm sure you have. <laughs> so we find red blood in patients when we carry out standard phenotyping. Example given this one. This is, this is a red blood type here. When you, have, when, you are big, when you are little C negative and little E negative, it is very exceptional. Or you may also find a red blood type when you perform an extended phenotyping. These ones, for, for instance, or when you investigate an antibody to a high prevalence red blood cell antigen. You may also find, by chance, someday, a rare blood type, especially when you perform a standard automated genotyping test for the Duffy, Kid, and MNS systems, and you find something unexpected. I, gave you, I, give you, uh, I will give you an example further on. So this is, this is a DNA chip device that we use in our, in our, in our, in our lab. And so um, we are able, on a, uh, on a single chip like this one here, here, to perform simultaneously 34 blood types. And this is a laboratory report here. This was in a young STD patient. Just to know is um, Duffy kid and big S, little s status. And we found this, JSB negative. So it's a rare blood type. It's less than 1% in people of African descent. So, and so now we know this. And so it's a problem now, because what should we do? Uh, anyway, this is so rare that we cannot afford to give JSB negative blood from the National Frozen Bank as a prophylactic measure. We don't have blood enough to do that. <laughs> we, pref we just reserve it for people who have made the corresponding antibody. So with this chip, we are able to screen for 13 rare blood types in a row, uh, in a single step. And uh, in yellow, you have the ones that are specific to the African population. So on, on one single chip, we can screen for those 13 rare blood types. And we have also another chip specific to the RHC protein, RHC gene, I should say. And uh, it's able to screen for all of these variant RHC alleles. And uh, in the meantime, you may screen for those six rare RH blood types simultaneously in a single chip. The list is here. So it's very, very useful now to use those technologies. So now I'm going to move on to, to, to the new blood group systems being recently discovered. Um, this, is, this shows the evolution of the of the findings of blood group systems um, from, from the ABO here until RAG in 2010. And as you can see here, it took about 20 years to find a new one here. And what is quite spectacular is that, oops, sorry, in less than three years, six new blood group systems have been discovered. And among those, four have been discovered in our institute, thanks to an international collaboration, of course. And the names are JR, LAN, VEL, and, 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 and AUG, AUG. And I'm going to just focus on those two ones, because I don't have time to list all of them, <laughs> JR and AUG. So why did we decide to study JR, uh, actually the JRA antigen? 
JRA negative is, a, is an exceptional blood type in most populations, um, but we have, we have in our country a, speci a specific ethnic background for this rare type. Uh, it's found uh, in the European gypsy population and also in Japan. As you can see, many people live in Japan with such a rare type, more than 100,000 people. And the corresponding antibody is considered a clinically significant uh, allo antibody, and it is especially involved in very severe cases of hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn, with a toxicity usually occurring uh, from the 26th to 28th uh, week of gestation. And we were very, very unfortunately the first team to publish uh, a case of, um, of, of a fatal hemolytic disease of the fetus, a newborn. Actually, it was, it was a newborn in this case associated with anti-JRA, anti-JRAs, sorry. And another, other cases followed uh, afterwards. And and we speculate that this antibody could act as an uh, anti kel because it is poorly hemolytic. So uh, it is probably toxic on the red blood cell progenitors in the fetus, but we still need to prove it. And we, I think we're going to work on this. Um, why this cat here? Uh, it's because we found the molecular basis of the JRA antigen thanks to the cat. Uh, uh, indeed, the cat red blood cells are very rich uh, in, oops, sorry, in, uh, oh, sorry, in, J, in JRA antigen. Uh, as you can see here, it's about 10 times more than human red blood cells. And there is no, no JRA antigen on the mouse red blood cells. Don't worry, this is not the genuine cat, this is, this is my parents' cat. <laughs> So, uh, and, then, and then what we did is, uh, is an immunoprecipitation and mass spectrometry analysis. I'm sorry, I have problem with this. I don't know why. <laughs> okay. And uh, we discovered that the molecular basis of the JRA antigen was, was the ABCG2 protein. And this, and this ABCG2 protein is well known, and uh, its other name is is the breast cancer resistance protein. So I'm going to go into more details afterwards. What is very, very interesting is that when you are JRA negative, oh, sorry, again, why, why did they do that? Uh, when you are JRA negative, you are considered as human knockout for the gene ABCG2. It, it is non-functional. So there is no expression at all of ABCG2 in all the cells. And this is quite surprising because ABCG2 is known to be a major transporter in cell detoxification. And it, it was supposed to be essential for life, but it's not. As you may see, there are many, many people in Japan and they are just healthy. And this protein was also reported to play a key role uh, for uric acid transport and also folate and porphyry homeostasis. But there is no, there is no disease and they, there is a normal blood count. There is no porphyria, so nothing. Nothing, I would say, apparently ab abnormal. Um, so this protein is linked to cancer and as it's known uh, uh, as the breast cancer resistance protein and this and it uh, and it, it it allows a strong efflux into out like this of a large number of anti cancer drugs and uh, so this may lead to drug resistance in cancer and uh, so if you are jra negative this may be a problem because you are predicted not to be able to efficiently efflux several anti-cancer drugs, so you may be at risk of severe overdose of drugs. Because when, when the companies decided 
the choice of the dose, they did not, uh, well, they were not aware, of course, that ABCG2 null people exist. So it could be a problem. So we may propose to recommend a systematic JRA typing in Japanese and gypsy populations with breast cancer prior to treatment. And actually, actually, we don't know because they may e it may exist an alternative way of export. We don't know this yet. So we're going to work on that too. I hope so. And uh, the second point is ABCG2 was supposed to be essential for life, but we know that it's not the case now. So this may open the door to the use of ABCG2 inhibitors. They do exist, and uh, especially in breast cancer, in order to moderate chemotherapy resistance. And, and, the, and the second new blood group system, just to end my talk, so, so the name is Augustine. I'll tell you, I'll tell you why further further on. So this was published very recently in Blood uh, in June 2015 in collaborations with English people, American people, um, Switzerland uh, and our team uh, at, the, at the INTS. So ATA uh, is a high prevalence antigen and until then its molecular basis was unknown. And it used to belong to this series of red blood cell antigens called 901 series. That's to say a prevalence greater than 90% with unknown molecular basis. So it used to be here in this, in, in this table. And August here refers to Augustine's, the name of the first proban found in 1967. ATA negative, so you don't carry the ATA, an the ATA antigen, is a rare blood type specifically found in people of African descent. But the story is different because we did not find the molecular basis of ATA in, in, in an African person, but, but in a French Caucasian lady. Indeed, in 1994, a French woman showed a potent antibody to a high prevalence antigen and the serological investigation was said to be inconclusive, so this is why blood samples were referred to England. And the patient very interestingly showed an ATA negative red type, but she was not, but she was not African, so this was quite unexpected. But the antibody was not anti-ATA. So so the English uh, people speculated at that time that this lady could be 80 null, that's to say no AT protein. And we decided to perform new investigation 20 years later of this case, thanks to the same approach than for ABCG2 and, G and GRA, so immunoprecipitation followed by mass spectrometer analysis. And we found a protein, ENT1, that carries the ATA antigen. And this is coded by the, by the SLC29A1 gene. So this is what we found in this lady, here in, uh, in this gene, intron 6, a mutation uh, at the beginning of the intron number 6, responsible for a splicing defect. And so there is no S, so there is no functional SLC29A1 gene, and so there is no ENT1 <coughs> protein at all. So this lady can be said to be a human knockout of this gene. So what is the role of this ENT1 protein? We didn't know at that time, really, when we found that. Actually, this protein mediates the cellular uptake of nucleosides, and um, it is required for nucleoside synthesis in cells that like de novo nucleoside synthesis pathways and also it is necessary for the uptake of cytotoxic nucleosides, analog drugs, used for cancer treatment. Again, cancer uh, here. So what could be the clinical impact in humans if, no, if there is no production of ENT1? Actually, this was studied before our findings in mice and, they, and, and a team uh, from Canada and also from uh, the, the United States um, 
they, uh, they developed uh, a mouse, a knockout mice for uh, ENT1. And what's very interesting is that they found something that, that's said to be uh, diffuse idiopathic skeletal hyperostosis. It's quite difficult to tell. And it's also said dish. And uh, so um, if you look at these pictures, of the spine of the mice, if it's, if it's wild type, you don't, you don't see anything special, but if it's, an, uh, if it's a, a knockout ENT1, you see here classifications, very, very important classifications all along the spine. And what was very interesting is that when we had more, when we had more information about the lady, the French lady, um, we she said she was uh, sick for quite a long time. She suffered uh, frequent attacks of pseudogout and since she was 20. And this was not the case for their parents and children. And um, they, there are multiple small calcifications around the joints and without precise diagnosis, but it was said to be possibly a dish. And uh, also ectopic calcification and mineralization uh, observed in many other places. Then we decided to find the molecular basis of the ATA negative rare type in, uh, in people of African descent this time. And when we sequenced the, uh, the, the SLC29A1 gene, we found this mutation here responsible for this amino acid change. So this is the molecular basis of ATA um, antigen. So when you are ATA negative, you, you, here have, you here have lysine. And when you are AT null, you have uh, this mutation in intron 6 of the gene, and you don't express the gene. OK, so now my last slide as a perspective. Um, I come back to this 901 series of red blood cell antigens. So this corresponds to antigens with a prevalence greater than 90% and with an unknown molecular basis. So as you, uh, as you remember, ATA used to be here in the list. So now it's not, it's not anymore. It was elevated to uh, a new blood group system. But we would like to now to work especially on those two ones in order to find their molecular basis because it could be something again very interesting. And out of this we also have in our reference laboratory more than 30 antibodies of unknown specificity. We don't know what it is despite all our testings, molecular serology and so on. And so this, this may correspond to new red blood cell antigens and even new uh, blood group systems, we hope so, and with again a possible impact on, on other fields than immunohematology. Just would like to thank our team at the National Immunohematology Reference Lab. Uh, they are here. I'm not on the picture, I'm, uh, but anyway, this is our team, this is my team and also all authors involved in the discovery of the new JR and Augustine blood group systems. And thank you all for your attention. Obrigado. Mm.